Hey everyone, this is Mark. Welcome to Vinyl Crush and Happy New Year. So we're going to do a vinyl tag for 2021. Uh, my first installment for my channel was for the quarantine vinyl tag uh, a number of months ago. And so here we are doing another one and I'm kind of excited. So let's get started. The first question is um, a discovery in 2020. So this band Kurongbin, and I'm sure I'm butchering the real name of it. It's actually a Thai word. It means uh, engine fly in Thai. And these guys are a Thai, um, 60s Thai influenced, uh, sort of funk, Thai funk influenced band. Um, but they're a Texas trio. Um, their first, their, this is their second album. Uh, this came out in number like 2018, but they have a new one out called Mordecai. Um, and I heard about that album because it's on everybody's top list uh, or a lot of top lists. And um, so I went to look for that, um, but they were sold out at the time. So I listened to this and I actually liked this a lot. So I bought it and this is my intro to um, Krong Bin. It's, it's really um, bass heavy, surf guitar, uh, kind of funky. Um, it's, it's, it's really good. I mean, really enjoying this a lot. And this is a new discovery for me in 2020. So the next question that we have is what's a quarantine buy? So I have a lot of quarantine buys, I guess. I mean, I did buy some stuff online this year that I might not have because I didn't want to go out shopping. Um, the one that I'm going to show you is an album that I had on CD years ago and uh, decided I had to have it on vinyl. Uh, this is Bebel Gilberto. It's called Tanto Tempo. Um, Bebel Gilberto is the daughter of the famous Bossa Nova uh, singer, guitarist, and songwriter, uh, Zhao Gilberto. And so she has her own stuff. This is one of her first records. Um, she has a really beautiful, sultry voice. She really, um, it, it's definitely sort of down-tempo, bossa nova, Latin, um, kind of influenced future jazz. Um, beautiful, beautiful music. There's a song on here that I first heard of hers called uh, Samba Dabankao, which is an incredibly gorgeous song. And, and I really, if you like bossa nova and you like down tempo stuff and, and sort of, uh, this is gorgeous. Highly recommend it. Really, really like this album. So the next question is an LP you want to find in 2021. So I have a CD here of a band, Zita Swoon. They're out of Belgium. And uh, it's um, kind of, uh, experimental indie pop um, art rock uh, some acoustic stuff some electric stuff it's it's really amazing there's some songs on here uh, about the successful emotional recovery of a gal named Maria is one of them uh, another one I like on here ragdoll blues these are just really interesting uh, songs from a band out of Belgium and it's called I paint pictures on a wedding dress I'll show you the cover again um, I really like this stuff it's very unusual uh, I think this was came out in 1998 and uh, would love to find it on vinyl at some point. So the next uh, question is show a box set. So for the box set, I'm going to show um, this is put out by Numero Group. They do a lot of really interesting albums. I showed one earlier this year by Charlie Magira, um, also with Numero Group. Um, this is Duster. These guys are um, kind of a psych psychedelic experimental um, space rock uh, sad core um, they had four albums and this is a box set of all the four that they have they actually put out a new album recently that's not included here um, this came uh, with a booklet that's quite beautiful I'll show you a little bit of it real quick it's got all kinds of details um, the the name of of the album or of the, the is called Capsule Losing Contact. And they actually did um, some of their albums were I'll show you um, Transmission Flux. So it's it's kind of around the concept of space travel, lunar travel, that kind of thing. So the whole concept of um, space rock is is relevant in the names of their this is stratosphere this is the first album i heard of theirs and i just fell in love with it um the last album they put out for this box set was called contemporary movement and this one is a little bit edgier a little bit more grungier sounding 
but um, they're all really great albums and love the box set. So the next tag question is, show a concept album. So I'm gonna pull up uh, Philip Glass, Einstein on the Beach. It's, it's an opera, so it's obviously a concept album. Um, it's a contemporary opera where he really broke the rules of what conventional opera would look like. Um, the music is with synthesizers. It's written for synthesizers, woodwinds, and voices. Uh, it's really an unusual, um, it's an unusual music, especially for uh, Philip Glass. Um, an acquaintance of mine recently said, I'm gonna read this. This is best paired with some fine LSD in a delicious and safe environment. So um, it, it's a beautiful box set. It has, um, an incredibly beautiful booklet that shows uh, information about how it was composed, uh, about, it shows pictures from the actual opera that was performed. Um, it, it's, this is a wonderful box set and I really love the music. I'm a huge fan of Philip Glass. So that's my concept album. So next up we have an album where an artist or band changed directions. I'm, I'm actually sure I'm not the only one who's going to show this album, but I can't help it. I, I love this album anyway. Um, the Rolling Stones, their Satanic Majesty's Request. Um, this was from, uh, the, the title was sort of a play on words from the British Passports. Um, it, it's Her Britannic Majesty's Request. This is what it says on the passport. So they changed it to Their Satanic Majesty's Request. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, this, they were a, basically a blues rock band, R&B mostly, and uh, and at this point they switched over and got into psych. Um, it's pretty clear this came out about six months after, um, maybe even a few months less, around six months after Sgt. Pepper, and um, and so they were really copying Sgt. Pepper. In fact, um, the photographer Michael Cooper. Um, did the same, did the photograph for both albums. They actually went and hired Michael and said, will you do one or we want to do one like the Beatles did. And they even put, if you, it's hard to see in, in this um, lenticular cover, but there are, the four Beatles are represented in little spots like in the flowers or in the, in the picture in various ways, which is really interesting. Um, beautiful album, beautiful album cover, really unusual. And uh, this is uh, an original pressing from the U.S., on uh, on London labels, um, it may even be a first pressing. I'm not really sure, but um, so so they they really kind of got out of hand. Andrew um, Old Oldman, the person that was Oldham, I think, um, there was their producer, and he left. He had given up because the band was very inconsistent. Many of them were in and out of court for drug problems and so they wouldn't show up or it just took a long time. So he gave up and walked out and so they self-produced this album. A couple of good songs on it. She's a Rainbow was a hit. Um, this was, although it sold really well, it actually went gold in the U.S. Um, it was like number one or, or I think it was number two on the charts for a while, but it was panned by the critics and it was kind of a forgotten album. Uh, until recently, and um, psych rock has become very big, and people don't think of the Stones as just a R&B band uh, now, so they can actually hear this record as a psych album, and it's really quite good. So this next one, we're supposed to show a white label promo. Um, so the one that I want to show, I just showed a white label promo uh, in my last video, I think it was um, um, Thelonious Monk. Great, but I'm not going to show that again. So the one I'm going to pull out, Elvis Costello, My Aim is True. This is a white label promo um, for the U.S. Um, great album. Really enjoy it. Uh, and also I want to show one other. This is something I just had an, a, a, an inspiration to buy when I saw it. This is a white label promo uh, for the album which is for the TV show back in the 70s called Kung Fu. And uh, for those of you who had seen this TV show, it came out in like 73, it was groundbreaking. It was very unusual. Um, and, and some of the uh, scenes are played out in here on the record along with the music that went with it. And I just thought it was an interesting thing to have. So I picked it up sort of on a, on a lark. So next up we have a compilation album. 
Um, so I've shown this album before, but I, I so I'm going to show two. But this one I want to show again is called Do You Believe It? It's a compilation of soul music from the from the 60s. It's such a beautiful album. If you're a fan of soul music, I mean, like old school soul, please, please, please check this album out. It's on the Cairo uh, label put out by Mississippi Records, which is local here. Um, but you can get it on Discogs and other places. It's fantastic. It's a triple album and it's amazing. I think there's even a booklet in here that talks about all the uh, the musicians and, and it, it's wonderful. The other one that I want to show you um, that I haven't shown before, I just picked this up, Three Dog Night Golden Biscuits. So this is a best album, uh, best of album for them. Um, this is actually a first press out of the UK and it sounds so good. I'm just astounded. I'm used to hearing this because I learned, heard all of this on AM radio and, uh, and it, you know, it didn't, you couldn't hear the bass, you couldn't hear anything. It was just pop music. Um, this is an entirely different experience for me. Um, the, the songs on here, uh, Mama Told Me Not To Come was written by Randy Newman. It's a great cover, great song. They did a great job on that. They also do a cover of uh, Try A Little Tenderness, the hit from uh, um, uh, Otis Redding. And, um, but all their hits are on here and it's really well recorded and I'm really enjoying it. Next up is an album that tells a story. And this is supposedly supposed to be an album that we have a story about. So that's what I'm gonna do as far as my take on this. The album that I wanna show is Orville Peck Pony. Um, great album, I love his minimalist approach, his use uh, sort of combination of shoegaze, uh, country and alt rock. Um, the, the His voice is quite beautiful as well. Uh, with the album comes uh, a lyric sheet, A nice little sort of poster pick on the back. And um, so I, I love the album and I'm really enjoying listening to it. And um, the story behind this is, is that we have a friend who here in Portland, artists in town um, a whole, have started a thing uh, around stickers. So they design stickers uh, for various things using their art and their style. And then they sell them in packs and people like wait for them and they sell out and it's kind of a cool thing here in town. Um, so a friend of ours who goes by the art name of Not Cool uh, designed some some stickers uh, using Orville Peck's image. And in fact, um, will you Vanna wipe that for me, sweetie, and we can show them uh, some of the stickers. We don't have the actual stickers because we put them on something. So I'm just going to have them show them like that. You can get a sense of what the stickers are. Uh, and so, so what Not Cool did was he would post them on his Instagram page and then um, would uh, tag Orville, Orville Peck on, on the, the postings and Orville actually looked at them um, and reposted them on his Instagram page and of course all of a sudden he just sold out of all the packs. And um, so he did more and sold out. Um, the, he's still making them, they're still available. I'll put a link below for your uh, Orville Peck fans who are interested in getting some of these stickers. Um, and uh, Not Cool was going to be going uh, on his birthday. Uh, Orville Peck was gonna be in town here and so he bought VIP passes and he was gonna meet Orville there and hand him some stickers. So he had some actual stickers in his hand uh, and they had planned to do that. And then COVID hit. So he didn't actually get to go to the show. It didn't happen, uh, but great little story. And um, I admire Orville Peck and his interest in, in local art and what he supports. So next up is an album that needs a vinyl pressing. I'm hoping that um, Bill Forsell watches these things. He's a guitar player, a jazz guitar player. Here is a CD of his called this land and most of the most of the stuff he did in the 90s did not come out on vinyl they're starting to release a few things and i would love to see this album come out um, he's using a, a trombone a sax and a clarinet player along with drums and bass and him on guitar and oftentimes his guitar playing is is played like a horn like a, it's another horn in the horn section um, along with great jazz solos it's it's really kind of it's post bop but it's it's Americana influenced um, 
uh, a merging of New Orleans jazz and sort of a Salvation Army band or marching band sound. It, it's really quite incredible. I love this album. Uh, songs like Is It Strange? Uh, st or Is It Sweet? Strange Meeting, uh, Jimmy Carter Part One. Those are the first three songs. If you listen to those and you don't like this, then it's the wrong album for you. But I think it's absolutely astounding and would love to have this on vinyl. So next up, a common album and an uncommon album. That was such a hard question. A common album. I mean, I couldn't think of one record that everybody might have in their collection. So I just went with the Beatles um, because most people seem to appreciate the Beatles, but who knows? So I grabbed um, Revolver. Uh, this is uh, a first U.S. pressing on uh, Columbia Rainbow Labels, and it's a mono. I like the mono because I understand that the Beatles um, only uh, looked over the mastering of the mono albums and they passed off the, the stereo versions to somebody else. So they're almost different albums in a way. They're mastered differently. Um, great album. Um, they had some pop songs on here that were popular, but really my favorite songs on here are Tomorrow Never Knows and uh, For No One um, and I Want to Tell You. Th these are great songs and they were leaning towards uh, more psych rock and more interesting stuff that was outside of the pop rock that they would normally do. And it kind of gave a hint to what was coming with Sgt. Pepper's, which was the transition album for them. Then for uh, an uncommon album, again, I mean, gosh, you know, in the vinyl community, who hasn't heard of this? But I just thought I'd pull this up. This is Rebel Drones abusing the system. So Rebel Drones is Matt Hollywood. He was a guitar player uh, for a Brian Jonestown Massacre. And before that, he was with, um, uh, oh God, what's the name of that band? Um, the Out Crowd. Uh, he has another person in the band here from the Dandy Warhols, uh, another person in the band from a local band here called Federale. These guys are Portland-based originally, all these guys. Um, this album is a little, it's, it's droning psych rock and it's 45 RPM. It was actually made, I think, in around 2006, but it never got released on vinyl until recently. Um, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, album. 45 RPM, so it's really, and it's on black and honey for the concept of the drone. Uh, beautiful album, really like it. Uh, and it's, I'm assuming, kind of an uncommon album. So the next up is show an EP. So I have Guided by Voices. This is called uh, Sunfish Holy Breakfast. Um, it's kind of a mishmash of stuff that they just put together and threw on an EP. Came out on blue vinyl. Um, it's 45 RPM. It's, uh, it's not a great album, but I actually really like it a lot. I like the, the stuff they threw in here. I like their odd stuff that they didn't put out on other albums. And so here's an EP. So the next question we have is uh, show uh, an album from a girl group. And I'm really glad they asked this question because I've been wanting to show this album. The girl group I want to show is the Courtney's. Uh, this is a sort of power pop trio out of Canada. They definitely do um, surf rock influence, jangly guitars. Um, they call themselves slacker pop, but I would say it's kind of garage surf rock. It's a hint of the 80s in here. It reminds me a little bit of the Go-Go's, um, but, but better, actually. All Each song on here has a great hook, uh, great pop songs, um, but, but different, unusual in their own way. Lots of uh, pop culture references in the songs. It, it's, it's just a really good album. Great girl group. If you like girl groups like this, check it out. So next one is show an album with an album cover that you love. So for that one, I have another box set, actually. This is Arve Henriksen. The album is called A Timeless Nowhere. Uh, the, the cover was designed by uh, a Norwegian artist and musician named Kim Shorty, and it, it's beautiful. I love this, and I'm going to show you a couple of the covers of the each album in here is kind of unique. It's four albums. The, the music is kind of a atmospheric, well, there's a CD in here too, atmospheric uh, mixture of classical and, and jazz and um, electronic music. Um, 
Henriksen plays the trumpet, and so, so, but it doesn't even sound like a trumpet. It almost sounds like a flute or a, a strange instrument sometimes the way he plays it. But I really love the artwork on the album covers, and so I really wanted to show that. Beautiful. Kim Horty, I believe is how you pronounce his name. So, great cover. So the, the next question is a similar question that was asked for the uh, quarantine vinyl tag, which is uh, show an album that you've listened to the most. So for that one, I showed uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, Houses of the Holy, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do something different. This is another album that I have listened to the most. It came out in 1973. It's Almond Brothers, Brothers and Sisters. This is a fantastic album, and it, it's also a transition album for these guys because this is the first album that they did after Dwayne Allman passed away in a motorcycle accident. He was sort of the the heart of the band. His guitar playing was sort of made them what they were at the time. Uh, and because of that loss, they really had to depend on the other guitar player, Dickie Betts, who is a fantastic guitar player. He does an amazing job on this record. And uh, also uh, Chuck Lavelle is a piano player that's, he, he's played with the Stones. He, he's a session musician. He's played with all kinds of people. But he uh, does a lot of the piano work on this. There's, it's, it's jam band, so they have a lot of uh, soloing over stuff, piano and guitar. It's beautiful. Um, they had a hit song on here called Ramblin' Man, I believe. And, um, but a lot of other great songs, Southbound, uh, Come and Go Blues, um, and a song called Jessica, which to me is a great road tripping song. It's kind of a long song and there's no words. It's just jams. Beautiful song. Uh, this album for them, I think this is their best album personally, and I couldn't stop listening to it once I uh, picked it up. This is a uh, original pressing on Capricorn. This is one that had the misprint. There's actually a, a, a credit sleeve inside of here, and they instead of having the song Pony Boy on here, they had uh, something about Morning. They had a song that wasn't on here on the sleeve, misprint. Um, but great album. Uh, the next question is show an album that you uh, needed to have an OG copy of. There's a lot of ways you could consider that. I showed an album a while back ago, uh, Beck's Midnight Vultures, that I had to have an OG copy of because if I wanted it at all, that was all that was available. It was only pressed once in one pressing. So I had to get an OG copy, but I'm thinking more of one that I like really longed for for uh, and I've shown this album already it's uh, Elliot Smith either or it's my favorite Elliot Smith album I love Elliot Smith because I've shown it before I'm going to show another one that I also wanted to have an OG copy of Elliot Smith XO so this is first pressing bong load records I love bong load records they put out a lot of interesting artists and it's a great name um, this is, uh, and, and I wanted to make a comment. Um, Chris Profi and I were having a little uh, conversation recently around uh, first pressing quirks because he had an album that uh, it, it wouldn't f end the song or would keep looping back in. Uh, with this album, uh, most of the first pressing albums of the uh, uh, first pressings of this had a skip on the first song, and I found one that didn't. So I feel very, very fortunate. It's nice to have this. The next request is the last album that you purchased. So for that, I have uh, Aretha Franklin, Young, Gifted, and Black. This is, I love Aretha Franklin. Her uh, funk and soul influences, uh, gospel influences, R&B. Um, I don't like all of her records. She's put out a lot of music, but, but especially her early stuff with On Atlantic was quite amazing. Um, this album, has on it uh, a song called Daydreaming and another song called Rock Steady that were just favorites of mine for her. Um, really, really good songs. Great album. I'll probably be showing more Aretha Franklin in the near future. Really like her music. Next up, show an album that they don't get. So this would be, this is hard too because I can't imagine an album that, that nobody gets but this is the one that most of my friends don't really get uh, and I don't think it's a incredibly popular album but I really love this album it's Alan Holdsworth it's called IOU 
And uh, Alan Holdsworth is a prog rock guitar player. He plays um, jazz fusion. He's way outside the box, incredibly intelligent guitar player. He plays in modes and keys and plays dissonance and, and brings it back. He's incredibly fast, um, beautiful guitar player. Uh, love this album. The only thing about this album that I that I am sort of so-so about is um, the singer on this, Paul Williams. He's a great singer. He, he hits every note, but his voice is a little bit odd for me. and It's not my favorite, but the album is still a killer album. And it's one that, uh, uh, an album they don't get. So next up we have show a punk album or the closest thing to it. So I'm going to show both. Both are Portland bands and both are first releases. First one is The Wipers, Is This Real? Um, this is uh, this came out for Record Store Day. It, it's um, clear vinyl, reissue, re remastered, very well done. It, originally it came out in 1980, and um, they were a little late to the punk scene, but they didn't seem to mind. They jumped right in. Lots of great hooks, uh, fun, fun album, really well done. The other one, um, so this is Eat Skull. It's called Sick, Sick to Death. It came out in 2008. These guys are more of a lo-fi, noise, um, garage, art, punk band. Um, we actually showed uh, their third album um, a few videos ago, and that is actually more like a psych rock album. They really shifted in that last album. But this one really is pretty heavy, pretty fun, um, unique, really good album. And it was their first step into the uh, world of releasing records. So last up, I have um, favorite 2020 reissue. So I, I've, I've actually never shown an Electronica album, and um, I'm not really into EDM uh, or that kind. I really prefer um, experimental um, soundscapes, patterns, rather than EDM or, or um, house music. But this album originally came out in 2010. It was just reissued 10 years later. Um, there is Love in You by Fortet. And I love Fortet. Um, I have some of the early stuff done by him, and I think it's quite amazing. This one dances on the edge of being EDM, but I, I still really, really liked it a lot. Um, really good album. So it's a double album. Um, the uh, And it also comes with a third album of remixes that they added to this. So this is a reissue that came out, and I, I just... I think it's an incredibly good album. Very, very playful. So I think that's all we have for this evening. Thank you so much for uh, joining in on the uh, 2021 um, vinyl tag, and I will see you soon. Thanks for hanging out.